Hi there, this is Andrew Brody with Yokogawa's Network Solutions Group and today I'd like to talk to you about a combination that I see frequently in regulated fields, especially environmental uh, customers. And uh, one of the ones that I'm going to look at today is what's called a regenerative thermal oxidizer, which is essentially a big furnace that sits on the roof and cooks uh, exhaust air in order to burn up some of the noxious elements that might be in that air, typically found in uh, paint shops and uh, printing press areas and, and other areas that might uh, require to clean up the air, sometimes associated with uh, Title V permits. So what I've got today is a Micro R 20,000 uh, chart recorder. It records to paper. People like to have a paper record. And I'm going to also show how we can hook it up through the Ethernet port to DAC Logger so that there can be visualization on a local PC as well as a digital data record in case uh, anything happens with the paper uh, on the uh, chart recorder. So let's see, let's, let's take a look at what we have here. What I've got up on the screen right now is uh, our MW100 and the only reason I have the MW100 data logger here is it's got an analog output module on it. And that uh, analog output module we can see right here, I can control between uh, essentially 1 and 5 volts. So I'm going to use this to simulate flow going through my thermal oxidizer. So I've got this uh, 1 to 5 volt output hooked into a analog input on the Micro R 20000 paper recorder. And what that's going to do is, as I adjust this, this is going to impact the flow rate that we see on the Micro R 20,000. I have also got a thermocouple hooked up to the Micro R that's just uh, showing room temperature. I don't really have anything to simulate the uh, high temperatures that I uh, might see in a typical thermal oxidizer application. So let's uh, minimize this for now. And let's bring up some software here. Now to do this uh, example and typically what I see for customers that are trying to do this they're going to have a few things. First of all they're going to have a Micro R 10,000 or Micro R 20,000. They're going to order it with the Ethernet option and they're also going to order it with the math option. Now the Ethernet option is needed in order to connect to this software over the network so we can easily make configuration changes. Uh, but the Ethernet option is also necessary if we want to try and pull the data into DAC Logger quickly over the network. Uh, you could also do stuff with an RS-485 option. So on the Micro R, the RS-485 would be the C3 option. Ethernet would be the C7 option. Uh, I prefer Ethernet just because it's faster, easier to configure, and uh, you don't have to worry about did you get your uh, wiring right. It's uh, usually pretty standard for communications. Okay, so what I have here is uh, I've got the RXA10 configuration software. This is what we'd use to configure a micro R's, uh, the micro R10,000 and micro R20,000 series. And the first thing I do once I have this open is I go down to communication settings here. And this is where I'm going to put in the IP address of the micro R. Now you can set the IP address on the uh, micro R by essentially stopping it from recording, stopping it from doing math. And then uh, you essentially hold down the double, the two different uh, arrow keys uh, in combination for at least three seconds, and that'll put you into basic setting mode. From there, you can go down to Ethernet and uh, put in an IP address into the unit. If, uh, if in doubt, refer to the documentation. But once there's an IP address in this, I can go ahead and do something like uh, receive settings from the unit. And this will go out across the network. In this case, I've got a really old micro R that's got an older version of firmware, so it's going to squawk at me a little bit about this. But that's a uh, no big concern because it'll do its best to match up with my new software. And so what we'll see here is it it brought in, okay, I've got a thermocouple hooked up on my first channel. I've got a 1 to 5 volt input hooked up on my second channel. You can see some of this information. Since it's in my office, it's you know, 32 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, but uh, certainly if this was an actual application, it would probably be something like, uh, you know, 1100 to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, just so that it could burn off the gases. 
I'm also bringing in a 1 to 5 volt signal, so this is how I would do this. Also, if I was bringing in a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, I'd set it up the same way. Okay, uh, the only difference is, is physically on the back of the recorder, I'd put a 250 ohm precision resistor across the plus and minus leads to convert the 4 to 20 milliamp signal to a 1 to 5 volt. Okay, and then here I'm scaling that 1 to 5 or 4 to 20 milliamp signal from 0 to 500 standard cubic feet per minute. I've also enabled low cutoff on the unit, and I'll show you where, if this isn't showing up on yours, where you can put it in later. I've also put in a few alarms here, like a low alarm, just in case my flow rate gets too low. All right, and I've got it tied to relay number two. That's relay one, that's relay two. Okay, the next thing I have is my math channels. And these are some of the typical math statements I see in environmental applications, uh, especially for this one. They're looking for an average temperature. So I go tlog.ave channel one from the previous page. So that's averaging that temperature that we set up on the previous page. Okay, and then once again, it's zero to 100 F. I've got a low alarm here. T typically in thermal oxidizers, there would be some type of low alarm where if the average temperature drops too low, then uh, they're going to fire off an alarm, okay? And so I've got it hooked up to alarm relay one. What's also uh, interesting to note about this channel is uh, over here in the T log column, I've got it hooked to timer one. And essentially, this is where I can set up, hey, I want to do a three hour average and then reset and start a new three hours. Typically, this will be in your uh, whatever type of environmental uh, agreement or documentation or license you have uh, permit for that particular building, okay? And I'll show you where to set up the timers later. I've given it a name, and then just going backwards here, I've also got my total flow. And we can take a look here, T log sum, channel number two, and essentially I'm putting in my span here, and that's gonna be my standard cubic feet, all right? And uh, the only other thing to note here is on the second channel, since it's standard cubic feet per minute, I've got my sum scale set uh, per minute here, and I don't need to worry about a timer in this case. So moving on to the next one here, uh, a lot of this can be left uh, default. This is going to affect what you see on the digital display on the screen. You've got different choices. I just go with the four channel digital in this case since I have two inputs and two math channels. Uh, next thing I do is I go over to this uh, setup here. This is how you can say how your alarms will operate. Uh, channel here, uh, you're going to probably want to set out, set burnouts on these in case they uh, go, and you're going to want them to fail in the most appropriate direction for me. So my temperature, I'm going to have that fail down. So I've got a good warning if uh, that temperature opens up. And same thing for my flow. If my flow uh, has a problem, I want it to go downscale as well. Okay, key lock, not going to worry too much about it. Timer, remember the timer that we set up on the uh, three hour average for that temperature? Well, this is where I can go in here. You got two different types. You've got absolute, which means, you know, like on the hour or whenever you can do a timer. But the most common I see here is uh, relative time. And so this just means every three hours, no matter when I start and stop my recorder, it's going to calculate that average. And then down here, I can say what to do. Stuff like uh, print it or reset it at the end of that three hours. Okay, and then I got my second timer there. Print setting. I can choose to print tags, my alarm, stuff like that. Here's some other things that you could end up setting. Periodic printing. Uh, what's also important about this particular page here is what my channels are and what the pens are tied to. And so in this case, input channels one and two are tied to pens one and two, and math channels one and two are tied to pens three and four. Okay, here's some other stuff that you could do to set in it. A to D integrate, I usually leave this alone. Um, another important thing that you're going to want to do right at the beginning of setting this guy up is pick your temperature. In this case, I'm uh, going to pick Fahrenheit. When it ships from the factory, it uh, may be Celsius since uh, these come out of Japan. All right, uh, computation error. Whenever I compute, I just want those to go to minus over in case of some type of exception. Okay, and I think that's about it as far as what we've got going on here. So once I'm done all this, I can go back to communications, I can go send settings, okay, uh, it's going to say there's a mismatch because of that old firmware version, but it's going to go ahead and send it anyways. 
oh, well, sorry, it can't in this case because I've already got this guy uh, calculating and doing some recording. All right, so I could receive the settings. I just can't send it while it's calculating and recording. If I wanted to send the settings, I just go ahead and uh, hit the record button on this guy again, and that'll stop the recording. And then I'd also hit the function key and then choose to stop my math. And once I could do that, I could actually go ahead and send it. But since this configuration's already in the unit, I'm not going to worry about it for right now. So I'm going to close this guy out since the unit's already configured and up and recording. And the next thing I'm going to do is show you a piece of software that you're going to need to set up first before we can do anything with DAC Logger. All right, and that's a product called uh, Gate Micro R. So if I go over here to DACWorks and go to uh, Gate MR, open it up, and I've already opened it up down here, we'll see that it'll originally show up here as not connected. So the first thing you're going to want to do is when you come in here, you're going to want to go and pick Micro R 20,000. You don't need to worry about any of this stuff here. The next thing you're going to do is pick Port Ethernet, and then you're going to come over here to Address. Under Address, you're going to leave, leave username and password blank for now, and you're going to put in the IP address of the Micro R 20,000 that you previously set up. So I'm going to go OK, and then you're going to click over here. Once you click here, this little guy opens up, and you can do an automatic detection. So it'll go off across the network and determine what's going on in this guy. So in this case, it comes back, oh, I'm type pin, I got four measurement channels, I got eight math channels. If I add more of them on the network, I can go and do the same thing for all of them and put them all into here. All right? Then I can go over to scan interval. This is essentially how often I'm going to be communicating with the guy. So in this case, it's uh, once a second. And uh, should I lose any communications, then this is my retry interval here. And don't worry about the ones that aren't connected. And then I can go to monitor status. And I can go ahead and go start. Okay. And what we're going to see here is this first recorder is up and communicating. So now that I'm up and communicating to it, I can move into DAC logger and get that guy configured. So I'm just going to minimize this for now. And I'm going to go over here, start all programs, Yokogawa DAC works. And I'm going to go here to DAC Logger and open up Manager. I've already opened up Manager, so here's what he looks like right here. It's configured from right to left. And uh, we've got some other little configurations in here, like Logger configuration. And under here, I can say how often I'm going to scan the points that are in here and how often I'm going to record them. So I'm scanning every five seconds, and I'm recording every time I scan. So in this case, it's a one ratio. But if I put a 10 in there, it would be every 10 scans, I would do a recording. So this is kind of like the ratio of how many scans to recording. So in this case, it's one to one. I could do 10 to one. And then, you know, if I put this in here as 10, we'll see that it now goes to 50 seconds. Okay. So I'm going to put it back to one here. And we'll see it's at five seconds. All right. And then you've got some other options here, like where to put the files. You know, what to do if you have instruments that have math that uh, allow for auto start. The Micro R 20,000 doesn't really allow for uh, too much in the way of that. Uh, it, it allows for start, stop, but uh, it doesn't allow for uh, the clear function. All right. So I can go OK there. Let's get into the bulk of the configuration here. And this is where you go to the ENVI tab. And it's going to come up here. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to pick gate. You're not going to worry about the measurement channels. You're not going to worry about this. You're going to put in your port is Ethernet. Your address is localhost. That's because gate is running on your local computer. So you don't need to put IP address or anything. The only reason you'd put an IP address in here if you were talking to a gate is if it's on a different computer. The other thing you're going to do is you're going to go down here and go fix and put in 50300 for your port number. If you go to Gate and go to File, Port Number, you'll see that by default it's 50300. So let's uh, close the Gate Micro R down here, minimize it. That port 50300 matches up with it. OK. And then you click here 
and you go ahead and do a determination. And if everything's okay, it should come back with this successful determination and it's going to bring in 12 channels. Don't worry that it doesn't say math or control or anything like this. The key thing is is that it matches up with how many total channels were found here, 4 plus 8. Okay? And the reason it's not really differentiating is it looks at the gate as an entire recorder and just kind of puts everything down as a measurement channel because under this gate we might have several micro R's. All right, so don't don't be too upset if you don't see, you know, four measurement, eight math channels, stuff like that. All right, and then just go save. Once you're done the auto configuration, you can close it out. The next thing you do is you'd go over here to tag, and then under tag, you just go ahead and hit this button. All right, and this guy's gonna suck in all the buttons. Then I can click here, go down here, hold my shift key down, hit that. It'll select all these guys and I can actually suck in the tag names as well. All right, since I'm not using these points, I'm just going to turn them off. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save. And we can see here that I've got all the four points that I'm interested in. I can go ahead and uh, save again, close it out. I can then move over to group here. And I can just once again do an auto grouping it's going to bring them in. I've got my four tags here. I go save. I can close this out. And at this point, I can hit scan. All right. And now I'm up and scanning at the data. If we go down to gate micro R and we go to monitor status, we can see that uh, my computer is now hooked up to it and retrieving data. Okay. I can then go ahead and hit record. Now I'm actually recording data. I can hit the monitor here, and this is where I can now bring up my various groups here. So in this case, we see it's RTO1, the group I'm looking at. I'm looking at it in this case in name view. If I want to change it to numbers, I can go ahead and hit numbers or tag. If I want to look at it as a trend, I can go over here, look at it as a trend. I can uh, change my grid color. If I want. All right, or I can kind of go the other way. I can turn pens on and off. I can do uh, auto scaling right here. All right, so turn that guy back on. So we can see I, I can do all types of real time monitoring of what's going on with my unit. And at the same time, because I hit record back on the DAC logger manager, it's actually recording off to my uh, hard drive right now at that uh, sample every five seconds. So I could go ahead and close this out if I wanted to, close out a few of these screens, drop that guy down, bring up the project supervisor here. I could um, then go into the viewer here. This allows me to look at historical data. All right. So let me drop this guy down here. I can hit current data there. And this kind of shows since I started recording what's going on here. Or I could go file open and I could take a look at some of the previous files that I've recorded. All right. You know, and what's nice about this is it's got the similar controls for the background, like the grid colors. You know, if you want to change. your background colors, your grid colors, stuff like that. I can also do stuff like, uh, you know, retrieve any new data that may have come in, retrieve any data that may have come in behind it. In this case, you know, since I'm looking at an old one that stopped, I don't have any data from before or after. I can also do stuff like drop this control on the screen and then I can drop a cursor and get exact values in that control or I can drag the cursor and get the difference between the points. I can close this out. I can look at it in digital view as well if I want and see time and date stamp as well as the area I have in the cursor highlighted in red. I can also go ahead and convert to Excel if I want. Okay. So. 
and I could just go ahead and hit that guy again and this is of course bringing in the latest data in historical view if I want to update I can just click this and we can kind of see the line grows a little bit every time I hit it okay assuming there's been enough five second samples that have passed all right so I'm going to close out the historical view go back here and there we have it we have DAC logger simultaneously recording the data to the PC while the micro R is going ahead and recording it to the paper all right and so that's uh, everything we have to here today I uh, really appreciate you dropping in and be sure to give Yokogawa a call if you have any uh, concerns uh, regarding this setup or would like to talk about a solution